Good morning, church. Good to see everyone this morning. Beautiful, beautiful day, right? We have nothing to complain about today as far as the, as far as the weather goes. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope we had a blessed week. But you know, I really already know the answer to that because if you follow Jesus, you're a receiver of His great love and mercy. And, and we have redemption, so I know we're all blessed. <laughs> Um, I do want to mention today that uh, you need to take the time to uh, tear off this hat on your bulletin, fill that out, let us know you were here, let us know if you have any prayer requests or any uh, praises, we want to know about those, we want to share those together in the church family, and I haven't mentioned this in a while, but you know, if, if you have a prayer concern that you would rather not be in the bulletin, but you want the prayer team to pray about it, or you just want the minister to be praying and prayer about it, there's a place for you to mark on there to do that, so... Please let us know that. Prayer is powerful. We want, to, we want to do all we can in that arena. Also, we do practice social communion here in Southwest, so if you are a baptized believer in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, then we ask you to take part in that communion time just a little bit later in our service. Why we open with prayer? God, we're just so thankful for this glorious day, the day that we can come and worship you. And we thank you, God, for sending Jesus that we might be redeemed and restored and have salvation. How we thank you for your scriptures, for the Holy Word, and for the Holy Spirit. And our prayer is today, Lord, that, uh, that we would just open our hearts and our minds just to receive you and draw closer to you and our relationship with you. And Jesus, that we would go out as you commanded us to do, that we would tell others about you and spread the good news of the gospel. And just give you all praise, honor, and glory this day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Scripture this morning comes from Psalm 113, verses 1 through 3. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I need to read that again or is that pretty clear? We're going to praise God today. Once you stand, we we'll sing.
Uh, Lord, we lift the T.A. Glenn Beckham as he continues to fight liver cancer in his body. We ask your healing on him. Uh, Lord, I uh, ask for a uh, prayer for Allison Harris as she uh, tries to figure out these herniated discs in her neck. And I ask your blessings on her as she goes through that. For this young couple that is uh, trying to figure out things and living out of a van, I just ask for your provision in hand. I pray for wisdom and guidance for our ministers and, and people in place at Lightboat and the continued work that they carry out as well. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to worship, to praise you, to serve. Give us clarity, give us uh, guidance, and just continue to let us grow in the midst of uh, spending time and worshiping you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
can't read, uh, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's a read this. I was thinking a couple words in particular, all and sin. But I looked up online how many sins is in the Bible. And it varies just a little bit, but it's roughly 667 sins. Then I wanted to figure out who all was included and in all. This is where it got complicated when I started looking up the world population. But it is now roughly seven million, but throughout time, and uh, the figures range dramatically from the birth of Christ on, anywhere from uh, seventy-eight million to one hundred seven. I mean, one hundred sixty billion to one hundred seventy billion. So I kind of look at that and say either somebody going by Common Core math, they can't come up with the same answer ever, or you know, it just they they're not sure. But as I look on this, I try to break down what I can understand. I know out of them 667 sins roughly there, how many I have did. And when I look at that, I know out of the hundred something billion people, every one of you have seen. If you guys can show us.
whatever plan that you have, other thoughts, if we listen to it, and we try to follow it, if we get off that path, I pray that we, that we will work back to that. He says that the name came into that. <laughs>
So, <laughs> here this morning, have ever seen Antique Roadshow? Any of you fans of the Antique Roadshow? And uh, so, what is that show all about? <laughs> okay, finding treasures. About old stuff. People bring in their old stuff, and and someone looks at it and tells them what it's worth. Um, the older, the better. The more genuine and real, the better. Uh, so often, what amazes me about that show is uh, it can be rusty, it can be chipped, it can uh, have paint that looks terrible, uh, it can be broken, and still be worth a lot of money. But what is the condition for it to be worth a lot of money? That it was an original or genuine. There's hope for us in this room. The older, the better. <laughs> Uh, no uh, 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 surgery done or things of that nature will make you look better. We're bringing the originals, and so hey, we've got a good room today. Uh, you guys are worth a lot. I don't know if you've noticed, but like when Aaron and Ed both share both the things that they comment about. We come to this house today, and we look at a picture like this one up on the screen, and we're dealing with this series of being genuine and real and authentic. And we look at a picture like this. What do you think today is going to be about? Yeah, the old, the old little mouth. And uh, so as, as we look at that song, we'll be careful. And it started off little eyes, ears, hands, feet. Today, it's so oh, be careful, a little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, a little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above who is looking down in love, so be careful, a little mouth, what you say. How many of you have ever said something you wish you could take back? Anybody? Matter of fact, I'm going to read some scripture of truth today in His Word that says every single one of us is in this house has a problem with this on the screen. Lies, deception, gossip, uh, boasting is one of the ones talked about. Uh, words that we should say. Uh, we're going to look at that in this next piece here. We've been reviewing the Big Ten, the Ten Commandments found in Deuteronomy and Exodus found in the Old Testament. Uh, we kind of use it as a measure of how our life, being genuine and real in Christ, are these guides. So I want to review those real quick. Number one's up on the screen, so I already gave that away. But what is number one? Uh, there is no other God before me. He's number one. Matter of fact, I believe there's only one God. There is no other God at all. There's one God. Now there's what we make up, which is Number two, what is number two? No idols. I will not bow down. So, do not bow down to idols. Number three, the one we're looking at today. Do not misuse the name of the Lord. It looks like a W. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about it today. My boys tell me the way they remember is O M G. You know what that phrase means, O M G, so often. We are not to take the Lord's name in vain, but we hear so many people today say, oh my, and then they use the Lord's name in vain as some cheap term. So we're going to talk about that a bit today. Number four. Remember what four is? Yeah, stop and keep the Sabbath day holy. Number four. What you're participating in here today, I mean, we could argue about what day is the Sabbath, but that's what we're doing here. We're recognizing one day of our week to the Lord. Number five. Honor, honor your father and your mother. So I've taken a note to honor my parents. Number five. Number six. Remember? Number six. Don't kill. Don't murder. Number seven. Don't commit adultery. There's only supposed to be two. Not a whole bunch. Just two. All right? Number eight. It was showing don't steal. No thumbs. In other cultures, you get caught stealing. One of the penalties, having your thumbs cut off. So number eight, don't steal. Number nine. Yeah, don't get false testimony, don't lie. Number nine, I'm taking an oath to tell the truth. So do not lie. And number ten. What ten was? <clears throat> Don't covet. Don't offer one or desire your neighbor's stuff. 
and it goes into reference his wife, his things, his servants, and his, do and his donkey and his ox. You're not supposed to want that. Which I don't want those things anyway. They make a lot of ice. I'll go to the grocery store if I want that. All right, so don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Today, we are looking at specifically number three. Number three, I shall not take the Lord's name in vain. There is a very high standard that has been set. As we look through the Ten Commandments and we look at those standards, we look at what Jesus taught us in the New Testament. How many of us in this house can keep the standard? You know, even on a physical sense of things, if we could keep the Ten Commandments on the physical sense of things and just do that, how many have done that? None of us. Jesus expanded it and said, listen, even if you desire or look at, a, at another lustfully, you've committed adultery. Even if you have hatred in your heart towards a person you wish they were dead, you've committed murder. These are some pretty high standards. It's not one that any of us can pass. It's what we do in church when we get down to the bottom line of attending church. There isn't anybody in this house today that can save yourself. We're not on the scale system where if I do more good than bad, I'm okay. That's not how it works. There isn't anyone that can level out the scale. But there is one that can pay the price. His name is Jesus Christ. It's the one we glorify and honor because he had to save us. It's through faith in Jesus Christ, through what he did, that we are saved. Now Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 11 said, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. What's the deal? I, I've, I've listened to people talk about the, the name movement. There are some people out there that say if you don't use Joshua or Yahweh or terms like that, you brute terms for the Lord, that uh, the God won't listen to you. If you don't pray his name correctly, he won't hear you. Is that true? You know, when I was, when my boys were growing up, um, I always told them, you have to call me your dad. So if they said my name wrong, I wouldn't listen to them. You know, when they were babies, it took them a while. They wanted to say their mom's name first, so I wouldn't talk to them. I wouldn't listen to them. I wouldn't do anything for them. You think that's true? That's ludicrous. And so then I'm supposed to look to my heavenly father and say, oh, I'm sorry, God, if you don't under, if I don't say it correctly or, or you don't understand it, then you can't hear me. Do you guys believe that? The one that created and loves you and we to love him, he wants a relationship. Those things are ridiculous. So when we re reference this here, misusing the Lord's name, are we talking about uh, whether we say Jesus or we say God or we say Lord or we say Holy Spirit? Is those the references we're talking about here? No. Misusing the name. And what does that misuse have to deal with? Specifically here in the Old Testament reference. It's talking about respect. You know, if I, if I show disrespect to God, what am I doing? Let me just test you real quick. The scripture says there's one unforgivable sin in the scriptures. What is it? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What? What did we talk about when we first started the service here? This sermon. Who, who among us can save themselves? What just me? No, I'm kidding. None of us. Doesn't matter what you think you look like, no matter what you're putting out to everyone around you, to be genuine before God is to lay yourself bare. He is the only one that can save Jesus Christ. Not a one of us can save ourselves. So when we, we talk about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, what are we saying? It's a rejection of Christ. It's a rejection of God. It's a rejection of Jesus. Therefore, rejecting that salvation offer, how can we be saved? There's no way. It's only through Jesus Christ. So when we talk about the misuse of the name of the Lord, anybody ever been guilty of that? Yes. Or heard, hear that maybe on a daily basis? Um, maybe you've used some of the uh, substitutes. How many of you have ever said, oh my gosh. We're, we're, we're not sinning then. We're, we're doing it respectfully. What is the issue? The issue is respect. So, can I have a volunteer? Is there anybody here that cares to volunteer their wife? Uh, she doesn't have to come. All right, so Kelly, can 
Kelly Brown up here, Kevin volunteers her. How many, how many of you, and, and Kevin, you can be the judge of this. Uh, so, Friday, I dropped a stool out of my closet. It landed on my big toe perfectly. I was barefoot, and it hurt really bad. And so, what if I said, oh my Kelly! <laughs> and Kevin was around, and every time I'm, you know, at church or one of you guys get hurt, and you yell, oh my Kelly! Do you think Kevin might find that offensive? I mean, maybe Kelly would find it offensive. <laughs> yeah, maybe my wife would find it offensive. you understand what I'm saying? It's a respect issue. I remember listening to the general that was second in charge of all the Russian armies. It was back when they were trying to take over Afghanistan. His helicopter was hit by a heat sinking missile. And he said when that helicopter got hit by that missile, there was no other name he was going to yell out. There was no other person he cried out for except for the God of creation. He cried out for Jesus Christ at that moment. Wasn't a Christian man. But when he knew he was crashing to the ground, he cried out for God. It's respect. It's the name of the Most High. It's the honoring of whose we belong to. James 2.10. And then we've already kind of referenced this, but for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking them all. Ed was referencing the list he was talking about is all these different lists of sins that we find throughout the scripture. And when you look at all the different ones, it's a big list. And every single one of us in this house is guilty of a least one of those. I would say probably most of us. What's it say here on the board? If you stumble at any of them, you, you break them all. It's an all or nothing proposition. It's a high standard. James 3, 1 through 12 says, Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. So what was the reference here? If you can control this, if you never tell lies, you never gossip, you never misuse the name of the Lord, you never cuss, you never boast, you never do any of those things, what are you? You're perfect. You're the perfect man. Is any, is any of the perfect men here today? If you are, you need to come up and take my spot because I'm not. And that's a reference of what he's saying there. Matter of fact, who wrote this statement here? James, who was that? He was a half-brother of Jesus Christ, meaning that he shared the same mama but not the same dad. All right? His dad was Joseph. He, so, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone is ever at fault, in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boats. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, my brothers. This should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So what is the big reference in these verses, these words from James? One, there ain't any man that can keep control of it. There is no man that can tame it. It requires something more. My proposal to you today is we got to get control of this. 
any of you this week have something with your tongue you wish you could take back? Anyone? And Jeff, what happened when you came into this house today? Any of you that raise your hand that maybe there's something you said or uh, used that tongue for, and then you come into this house and you sang praise songs this morning? Any of you? Well, what did it say? How did James put it? This should not be the case. So what are we going to do about it? God says we all got the same problem. Age, none of that matters. Your economic level, it doesn't matter. Everybody's got the same situation here. So how do we deal with it? I want to give you one picture of this. The power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 19 through 21. I'll give you a little bit of that around it. Proverbs is not written in such a way that necessarily all the context is the same as you get in another book. A lot of Proverbs is written as, as individual statements or pieces of wisdom in separate verses. But if you read what is right around what I'm getting ready to read to you, it, it's quite amazing. It says, An offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city, and its youth are like the barred gates of the citadel. Think about it for a moment. How many of you have ever been highly offended by something somebody said to you? Hallelujah. Amen. No? Are you just not interactive today? Do we need to get up and do stretches? Surely you've been offended by something somebody has said. Uh, what have you seen when people have been offended by what you have said before? Maybe you've kept caught a fist. Maybe you've had uh, reactions. What's the case? The Bible tells us in this situation that a man or a brother that's been offended is more unyielding than a fortified city, all by the words, the statement that comes out. From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest from his lips, he is satisfied. What is that statement? <clears throat> What's coming out of it? What are you saying? Are you being filled by what you say? Is there repercussions to what you're saying? What if the Bible teaches us? Where, where does the mouth speak from? What does it say? Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when there's stuff that's coming out of you, any of you ever feel like there's stuff that has come out of your mouth and you don't seem, you just can't understand how it came out of you? What's the situation? Where does the examination need to take place? It needs to take place in the heart. And it needs to take place on this level between us and God. Now verse 21 says, The tongue hath the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its, its fruits. What is that statement? Look at it again. The tongue hath the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What is the greatest weapon that mankind has ever had? Prayer. But I want you to think about just on a physical level, which prayer is initiated through our words and what we say together. The most powerful weapon that man has known in the history of the world is the tongue. That's where wars begin with the tongues. Disputes, things between men and brothers. It says in that verse that you and I sitting here today, have that power. So how does that translate for us here today? I kind of like to keep it simple. I think every one of you here today have the power to speak life into people, and you have the power to speak death into people. What is the differing factor, or how do you determine what you're doing? Well, the one that speaks life is giving glory to God, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to our Savior and who He is. We're giving God all the glory in our life. When good things happen, we're pointing it to God, not ourselves. It's found in humility. It's found in sacrifice. It's found in, in showing mercy to people. It's found in, in, in good responses, humble responses, loving responses. Now, death, on the other hand, how does death translate out of our mouths? I would say that if you're here today, uh, you know, most people want to point the potty mouth real quick. Maybe we do got a little potty mouth in the room. I don't know. 
But so when we say potty mouth, we're talking about those colorful adjectives that so often come out of people's mouth. Sure, that's not speaking lying to somebody that's speaking lying. But how else do we do it? Putting down somebody, names, wit, gossip, lies, half truths, slandering people, our, our actions, uh, the way that we treat people. Sometimes, and as the scripture talks about as well, is sometimes in the things we don't say. Or standing up for those that are hurting or lost or struggling. We have the power, but where, where does that power come from? It comes from Jesus Christ. And that's going to be the last part of what we look at here today. Let the healing begin. How many of you guys need healing in this house today? How many of you got any healing of this mouth today? You know, we I, I didn't bring any orbit. I could have just had to chew some gum and clean it up. But I'm going to give you the Bible today, and we'll look at what it says. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. It's kind of a uh, verse that has really stuck with me for a long time. It says, There is no righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sins. Again, what is the statement here? Nobody's perfect. We all mess up. We've been hearing it all day long. Verse 21. Do not pay attention to every word people say, or you may hear your servant cursing you. Anybody ever catch that? You ever have that? Don't listen too closely. For you know in your heart that many times you yourself have cursed others. So how many of you said you've been offended by something somebody has said before? And how many of you then that raised your hand for that have offended somebody else by what you said? Yeah. All right. We're all in the same boat. Um, I love that because it reminds us, hey, if I'm pointing the fingers, if I'm the one throwing the darts, guess what? I've been the source of those things myself as well. I'm in the same situation of whoever I'm talking. Proverbs 10, 17 through 21. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. So what is the condition that we need to find? Where are you and I at in this room today? We know the problem. We have to acknowledge the problem. But then the next step to it is to heed the correction. When I first became a Christian, I was a senior in high school. And I had a little bit of what they call that potty mouth. I didn't chew warm gum. I was when I played basketball, when I was out in the field, when I was bailing hay. That's not a real fun situation. It tends to bring out the worst in you when you're hot and sweaty and you're uh, not feeling the best begin with. And so my mouth oftentimes revealed what was going on inside of me. When Jesus Christ came into my heart, the first thing I realized I needed to do was to clean up my mouth. I had to keep discipline. I had to be open with people. I had to be, bring Christian brothers and sisters in to help me in that. Um, my brothers, my earthly brothers, were some of the main ones in doing that. He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. So the second part of that, if there's hatred or if there's something going on inside of us, and we're holding it in, guess how that's going to come out? It's probably not, it's going to, uh, as we say, vomit out the mouth. If we allow that to get to the point of vomiting or coming out the mouth in that way, it's not going to be good. God says to deal with it. Keep discipline, deal with the problem, be real and genuine and true with what's going on inside of you before it becomes this. When words are many, what's that next phrase? Sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. Have you guys ever noticed that? It doesn't take long to realize this one. The more people talk, the more sin it's going to happen. Uh, the boasting one. Do we have any boasters in the room? Because I've sat around with a lot of the guys in this house before, and I listen to the story, and guess what starts to happen? The more you talk, the greater we become. That's not a good situation. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, 
But the heart of the wicked is a, a little value. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of judgment. Listen, I know every person in this house has words and things that have come out of you that you wish you could take back. I know I'm, I'm that type of guy that I'll lay in bed that and I'll think about things I've said, maybe things I've said to my own family, things I've said to, to friends, things I've said out in this community. And when I've said things that I shouldn't have said, it'll eat me alive as I lay there in bed. And it rolls over again in my mind as I lay there. Uh, the lips of a righteous man nourish. They bring life. They bring healing. I don't have that much time here. <coughs> I'm dying. Along with every single one out of you here. There's a one in one chance every one of you is going to die. You do realize that, right? I haven't seen any chariots fire around lately. Every one of us are in the same condition. And we really don't have that much time left. We have children growing in our homes, grandkids that come to visit, family members that are lost, a community that is, for the most part, a lot of it going to hell. And we have a choice. We can bring healing to this community, or we can continue to let death reign. You and I have claimed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. With that comes a responsibility. And that responsibility is to bring healing to his people. To let our lips be full of righteousness, to be choice silver, and to nourish those that we come in contact with. This is something that I can't do on my own. I find that I fail a lot at it. I find that you fail a lot at it. And I find that we're in the same boat. So what's the common denominator for this? How many gods are we serving? One. One. First commandment. Have no other gods before me. Let's take that first testament or that first commandment real quickly. Who are some of the gods that you worship over God? Little G gods. Alright, so money, stuff, phones, work, all those kind of thing. I want to just deal with one of them. I only want to deal with one of the little G God in this house today. You know who the little G God is I want to deal with? Me. You. Personally. Anytime that I put myself in the place of the Lord, I put myself in a place where I say, well, I don't have to live according to your commandment. I deserve this. I deserve this sin. It's okay for me to say this. It's okay for me to talk this way. And I try to justify myself in that sense. It's okay for me to talk this way because of what this other person did or this situation. God gives us a real theological word for that. And you all know what that word is? Hogwash. It's hogwash. It's baloney. <coughs> None of us can accomplish this on our own. We can't get these mouths clean on our own. And there ain't some magical gum that we can chew to make it. It's all according to Jesus Christ. So until we put him at the center as Lord of our life, the Lord of everything we do, the Lord of our attention, the Lord of our thought, the Lord of our desires, the Lord of our eyes, the Lord of our hands, our feet, our ears, our mouth, then we're missing it. It says here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 18, Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, 
you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts. And remember when we talked about where does the, the mouth speak? Out of the overflow of the heart. Here we're dealing with a situation. In your hearts. Set apart Christ as Lord. Where's the healing? How does it happen? It begins with the heart, setting Christ as Lord. Every single one of us in this house has this capacity today, or capability. We all can do it. Apart from thought, feeling, all the things, all the stuff, all the situations of life, we have the ability today to set our hearts on Jesus Christ. To make Him Lord over our little G Lord of me. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, against your good behavior of Christ, may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins. How many times? Well, shouldn't he do a re-crucifixion? No, he died once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. To bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. So, what's the situation for us here today? How many have broken number three, commandment number three? The whole ring. All of us have tongue issues? Absolutely. We are commanded to clean it up. We are told that we have the power of life and death in our tongues. You and I have been commanded by God to speak life into people, into this community, into our neighbors. How many of you are ministers here today? Do we have any ministers in the house? Anyone that has claimed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is a minister. I truly believe that every one of you in your workplace, your neighborhood, wherever you at, are the minister in that area, that community. So if you are if you have neighbors, you're a minister to those neighbors. Wherever you work, whether you want the label or not, you're a minister in your workplace. You are to be speaking life into those people. You are to be making a difference. Remember that statement, where does light shine the best? In the darkness. So if we're living in darkness, guess what? Our light should shine all the brighter. God has spoken to us. He has told us that we are called to be that light. And to allow our tongues and our words to be the source. But we can't do it on our own. The only answer is what we looked at in this next picture. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How many of you believe that? Amen. You know, I don't know how uh, how people react so often, but when we have people come forward, and we do believe this, that in order for you to have salvation, you need to confess that. You need to confess, before him, you need to confess Jesus Christ the Lord. He's the only one that can do it. But when we do that here at Southwest, I always ask everybody, everyone here that believes that, to confess it again. Am I saying that when you confess it the first time, it wasn't good? Absolutely not. But here's a practice I practice in my own life. Every day I say this. Jesus Christ, your Lord. And your Lord of today. Therefore, I'm going to live my life for you today. i got some ideas of what I'd like to do today. But if you need to change that up, you let me know. Why? Because he's Lord, not me. I get that mixed up all the time. That's why I gotta say it every day. Maybe you all are better than I am, but I gotta say it every day. Anybody else with me? So I'm gonna ask you today, whether you have said it a hundred times, a thousand times, over, I want you to say this confession with me. If you've never said it before, but you believe what's being said here today, I want you to say it out loud today. There is something very powerful when we say these statements out loud. So with me here this moment, if you believe what I'm getting ready to say, I want you to repeat it. 
I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Son of the Living God, and I accept Him, and I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 We'll see how far this carries out. <laughs> All right, there it is. You're supposed to be there. It is. Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for a time of study here today. Lord, there's some pretty harsh words, and I know that I personally and each of these men and women in here today have failed you in this. There are things that come out of our mouths that are disgraceful, things that we say that are hurtful, things that are death that should not be. <coughs> Lord, we want to be genuine and true. So we ask you, Lord, in the midst of this truth, to cleanse us and wash us and to make us new and to Wash these tongues in the air. God, we pray that we would use your tongue for praise and glory, that we would speak life. Help us to do it right now, right here, and to continue to do that as we go out from here. Lord, we want to worship you wherever we're at, whether it's in this building or outside this building. We give you worship, praise, and glory. Lord, if we just confess your name, we believe in our heart, and we know that you are Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world. Lord, I ask that, that truth be understood in this place and that your Holy Spirit continue to work on my heart and on the hearts of each of these men and women, especially, Lord, if you are touching those that have yet to understand that truth, I pray that you would just let them know here and now to see clearly who you are. Lord, as we sing these praises, may we give you glory and honor. It's in your name, Jesus Christ, we ask for you to sing. Amen. 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 Would you please stand? We are going to sing... Our decision fault. If there is a decision that you need to make for Christ, I would encourage you to step out of faith and do it right now. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to do that here and now to confess here before this family that He is Lord and we get baptized here today. Believe in that. If there's something that you want to pray about here at the altar today, we encourage you to do that as well.
thought a lot about what you were just saying. Uh, you know, you've heard me say it before. I would say a lot of people, if we're honest with ourselves, we would sing that song, I Surrender Some, instead of I Surrender All. That's a hard statement to make. And so I want that song to uh, be worshipped on all day today. I want you to think about it. And uh, think about what you sung. Or did you sing I, I Surrender Some or I Surrender All? Because if it's all, to think about your most difficult situation. Think about the stuff you're dealing with. Think about what's consuming your mind right now. You know, what is that thing going on in you? Are you willing to surrender it to God? Or are you keeping that back? Here's Jesus, but this is here. This is different. You don't understand. We're saying that to God. Surrender it to Him. Again, I want to thank everybody for being here today to worship. We do it together as brothers and sisters united by Jesus Christ. No matter our background, wherever we come from, it only matters that we are genuine with Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. You no, know, Dale, we've got a couple of announcements for us real quick. BBS meeting uh, today, 2 o'clock. I assume that's here. Um, and so if you are going to be a part of that, want to be a part of that, please be here for that BBS meeting, 2 o'clock today. Board meeting this week on Thursday, 515. Friday night, fun night. Um, is that going to be at 8180? It says open gym at 8180. Bring a snack. 8180. It's going to be at 8180. Uh, downtown. Um, and mark your calendars for next week, please. Uh, we're going to have a church breakfast here at 915. Jeff Reed's going to be here. He's a missionary to the Tanzania. He's going to be leaving soon. church is supporting him in that effort. Um, and we're going to find out more about what's to be done there and how you can make a difference. I know many of us have you know, supported different feed the children or help clean water or shoes or education um, to some of the organizations out there, and that's all good and fine. But I often wonder sometimes how much, how many levels of administration are there, you know, or how much of that dollar actually makes it um, and can make a difference. I think you'll be convinced this will. There's no overhead, there's no organization, there's Jeff Reed going to Tanzania. Uh, with his network of churches there to help some children get to school and get the things they need in that program. So plan on being here for the breakfast to find out more about it. I think Jeff is going to preach our message that day also. We're going to find out more about that one fish program. And so uh, it's going to be a great Sunday next Sunday. Um, out the foyer, there's a sign-up sheet for meals for Diane Moore. I think there's just uh, three meals needed and one's been signed up for. So if you could possibly do that, that sign-up sheet is out there. We have a Radiate tonight, right guys? Yeah. Six o'clock down at day 180, Revelation study here at four o'clock. Uh, also we have a collection uh, box out there in the foyer for just empty, clean pill bottles. And that will make a big difference too in, in uh, undeveloped and third world countries, receiving medicines and clean and the way to keep them stored. So uh, you got any of those empty pill bottles around, bring them in, throw them in that box. Okay. And if anybody would like to help out with like an egg casserole or something like that, like I said, it's going to be during Sunday school hour next week. I have a feeling Sunday school is going to go up in, in attendance next week. So praise God. Want everyone to be here for that. It'll be kind of a more loose question and answer time with Jeff, get to know him a bit. So look forward to that. And we are going to do that donation for the breakfast, and that will go towards the One Fish program. So for the prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this time here together, and as we have worshiped, here as family, we continue to worship as we go out. Be our Lord and Savior, Lord. We just love you. We worship you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.